Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, I'll be talking with the makers of a movie made right here in Schaumburg. Then, members of the Schaumburg Garden Club will be here to discuss their annual bargain bulb and plant sale. We'll finish the program with a segment on the annual Father's Day breakfast at the Schaumburg Regional Airport. All of this and more today on Speaking of Schaumburg. The residents and staff at Friendship Village recently completed a feature-length film entitled Let's Dance. Here to discuss the project are its producer Donna Brown and writer Dan Zelizek. Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. Thank nice you, Mayor. To be here. Donna, uh, your producer, what does the producer do here? What, 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 produce, what did you produce? We produced a movie <laughs> called Let's Dance, written by um, the residents, well, this one in particular. And then we had some outside help with a uh, director, Rebecca Tulloch. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. And the producer actually puts out the fires. I had this one little part, and it's funny. Um, we had one of the residents not feeling so well, and his stomach was kind of acting up. And um, the lady that was next to him said, you know, he's just not feeling well. And I'm, I'm kind of worried he might be sick, you know. So actually, I took them both aside different times. And I said, you know, we can work this out. We can work this out. and. Um, We'll just kind of go a little bit slower. So things like that, you kind of have to talk to the, you know, the people that are participating in it. And you kind of put out little fires like that where someone might just say, well, I'm not going to, you know, participate today because I'm worried I might become ill. And um, it just kind of works out like that. Uh, also, with our arts and crafts ladies, they actually helped fund it. They were really good. They had a fair and they did pretty well. And some of the, um, the capital that they gained, they actually gave to our department so we could actually produce it because it is a costly factor. We got a pretty good rate with our director, but um, we were able to produce it for that reason. So Who was the director? Uh, the director was Rebe Rebecca Tulloch Satera, and she is actually a director. She makes uh, short films, oh. and she did win an award in Wisconsin Where'd at you the find film her? festival. How did it all start? We had a uh, Renaissance Fair a couple years ago, and I wanted to make it as close as I could, uh, at, like the Renaissance Fair in Wisconsin. So I, one of my contacts um, uh, that I wanted to hire, he actually played the mandolin, uh, he said, you know, I have someone for you that might be really good. And he gave me Rebecca's phone number, and I called her, and she said, yeah. And she goes, we can do this. She goes, I have a database of over 300 actors. Now the sky becomes the limit. You can just, you can do most anything you want because we have professional actors. So she was the queen. I had, um, oh, a palmness that read your palm, fortune telling. We had some knights in armor. It was really fabulous. And it was all due to Re Rebecca being this, this individual that has this uh, database. But she also does um, live performances. Uh, she does some war days and she does Louise May Alcott. She's just a very talented young lady. So she was able to help us with this, and she actually did all the camera work and all the, um, the show of uh, you know, directing, as well as bringing in someone that could be our choreogra choreographer. So it was really great, and the sound technician and stuff, so. I understand you had, you had a, a key role in, in, in developing this project. Uh, you, were you were the writer? Well, it was, yeah, the it, director, was, it, was the, like, uh, it was like, it was the director, a key role. I wrote the whole thing. <laughs> you wrote the whole I thing? I wrote the whole thing. And uh, I starred in it. <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't let me start, you wouldn't get my play done. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but she was, a, she what was, was your, a What was your name in that? In that uh, <clears throat> Don Zaliejo. Z-A-L-L-E-J-O. Zaliejo. And please... Remember, it's Don, not Ron, Con, or Lon. It's Don. Or Bon. I mean, <laughs> when you see the movie, you'll know I'm talking Bob, about it. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how many actors besides your, yourself were it? Six, were? seven, eight, uh, ten. All Friendship Village folks? Or? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. All senior, senior, senior citizens. Right, right. Yeah. Some had real small, minor parts, maybe one or two, you know, one scene. Yeah. And the other ones were throughout the whole movie with you. you yeah. Know, which was yeah. Really did, you, did you have casting calls? That oh, maybe, yeah. You, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, Rebecca called the whole. Well, Rebecca made copies of the script, called in all the people that had volunteered. Even before that, we did oh. a call for writers. Oh, that was the, the call first, for writers yes, came call up for first, writers. Yeah. So we had a group of about maybe eight, I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I think so. And yeah. there was about three people that actually attempted to write a script, 
And Dan finished his in what, an afternoon? Well, mine was Not selected a, as yeah. the best group. Well, that's what you said. You said either select my script or I won't, I won't be in the play. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you made those demands. Did you have a trailer? Did you have your own trailer out there? I had and a contract. Yeah. <laughs> you had a contract. Uh, yeah. And then after we did that, we had actually. Yeah, um, well, then everybody read lines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you read the lines of this character, then you read the lines of this character, and then of this character, mm -hmm. and the rest of the cast had Casting voted committee. to see, well, who did the best for this character, because each character was kind of a different personality. Mm -hmm. So it was the writers, so and we had auditions. From the auditions, we formed a casting How many auditions? Committee. How, how many? How many? Uh, well, we did all that in about one afternoon, yeah, we I did. think. We did one mm -hmm. long after we decided, because it takes so, quite a while for everyone to read all those lines. Sure. And it took a full afternoon, maybe two, three hours, to decide what the final cast will be. Now, now, did you have, have a, a oversight over, uh, over the script, complete, complete control, and I mean? Uh, over the script, yes. yes, but not over who was going to act or anything else. The director yeah. was the real boss. I well, was let, let, let's, we have a, a clip here, a short clip of that show. Oh, let's, okay. Let's, let's take a look at that clip. All right. Okay. I'll show them with their tango char rumba. Okay, folks, you learned three dances. Now I'll put on the final record, and you dance whatever step you think is appropriate for the music. And say the steps out loud. You didn't fall down, did you, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I did collapse. Don did collapse in the <laughs> movie. It, it, see, that was at the towards the end, after he had been attempting to teach three different Latin dances to three couples. Which Latin dances were you? Were, were you? Uh, we started off with uh, rumba, then we went to cha-cha, and then we went to tango. Xavier Cougat with, with the rumba thing, right? You, uh, you remember Xavier oh, Cougat? Absolutely, yes. Very good rumba, yeah. yeah. And these people were driving him bad because they were so bad. And they kept calling him Lon. And I said, no, it's Don. Oh, okay, Con. No, it's Don. And that's why he would look like he did at the end. The, bad, the, dr the dancers were driving him batty. Well, you're giving away this whole thing here. We, you know, we don't pick people uh, yeah, want to be I able to see the movie. movie see, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I'm not. Uh, don't that's give, just don't, an <laughs> overview. Don't give us the lines the, are the movie. Don't give us the yeah. ending, Mr. Hitchcock. No, you know? no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a surprise ending. Is it okay? Well, yeah. and and we're, we're going to show this film is going to be shown on our, our on our cable too, right? Oh, wonderful! Oh, Terrific! Great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, f full length. What is it? Thirty minutes? Thirty-five minutes? Well, it's about twenty-five. Twenty-five, mm -hmm. 25 minutes. Did you have to have everybody sign a, a release form? We did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you really did take care of, you really took care of everything. We there, did. Didn't you? We had now, three days of filming. Uh, actually, I think it's the longest anyone's worked in a long time. Oh no, three days. It was eight hours each day, you know, for oh. the film. But the practice and stuff before that was, you know, a actually we of, didn't do too much. Stuff. You know, yeah. we did like maybe two hours one, twice a week. I oh, think. yeah, more it than seemed that. more like more. <laughs> oh my so god. So how many how many friends did you lose through the course of that? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't have any friends over there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, a celebrity. Um, he is. So it was fun doing it, and. Uh, uh, like I say, he looked pretty frustrated at the end. So uh, Rebecca once asked me after it was all over, do you, you have another one? I said, yeah, I think the second one will be called The Revenge or The Don Zaliejo's Revenge. Don. They drove him bad in the first movie. He's going to drive them bad in the second, second movie. movie. Oh, do you have a second one lined up? Well, I don't know. It, it, it's up here. I don't know. <laughs> Don. It's up here. <laughs> Thank you. Dan, Don, Lon, Thank Ryan. You, Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Every June, the Schomburg Garden Club holds its annual bargain bulb and plant sale. We'll learn all about it next on Speaking of Schaumburg. The Schaumburg Garden Club's annual bargain bulb and plant sale is the place to be for great bargains on tulip bulbs and a vast array of perennial plants. Here now to talk about this year's event are the club's president, Jan Dowd, and plant sale coordinator Donna Johnson. Donna, 
You've been yes. here before, haven't you? Yes, I have. Good to see you, Jan. Good to you see too. you. Mary, nice to see you guys. All these, <laughs> these grips you guys have. <laughs> okay, what does the president do? Well, I, uh, I preside at each of the meetings, and I, uh, there's a number of committees that I also serve on. How many members do you have? We have 106 members as of last month, which is wonderful. We've had as many as 120, but you know people move out of town and so forth. Okay. But out of the 106 members, we have 22 men. Oh, really? Yes. Well, guys who like to dig, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Help their wives. Oh. <laughs> and, and how old is the club? How long? The you... club uh, was formed in 1989, and at that time there was between 12 and 15 members. And, and now where's the plant sale going to be? The plant sale is at uh, the Community Rec Center, the, the bargain and bulb sale. Okay. Yes, it's at the Community Rec Center. We just had our native plant sale, which was at Spring Valley Nature yeah, Center. Yeah. Typically, I get over there. I didn't get over there, there this year. Oh, but, shame uh, on you. <laughs> I'm waiting for the bulb sale. <laughs> okay, the bulb sale. Okay. I could use some 40 waters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and your, your role as far as the club is concerned? I basically coordinate it. I get the volunteers to sign up to work the sale. I okay. arrange it with the, uh, the CRC to have tables ready for uh, the, the products that we're gonna be bringing in. Um, and I also ask the members to bring plant divisions from their yards and uh, that's kind of the, the fun part of the sale. Okay. It's, it's, you never know what we're gonna have there. It could be just about anything from uh, daylilies to hostas. And then that's where we bring the uh, leftover native plants that we had from the native plant sale this year. There's a few little uh, plants that are still left and you'll have a second chance to take a look at those over at the bargain bulb and plant sale. That's all the uh, natives. Any demonstration uh, project? I mean, do you do that at all? Uh, uh, not really demonstrations. What we do is we have uh, kind of expert gardeners that kind of walk around and talk to, to the members, uh, uh, to the visitors. They're, they're not expert gardeners, they're master gardeners, aren't they? Well, there's, there's a difference. Wait, yeah. What is the difference? Well, a master gardener, you have to be certified by the, the master gardener program. Uh, and when you say you're a master gardener, technically you're not supposed to say that unless you, you're recertified uh. every year. Do you get a card or something? You a membership? She's card? a master gardener. A master gardener. <laughs> no, you don't get a card. No. And I think I asked you once before. Yes. About how you got started with your with your. Right. I interest. just uh, I just applied to, uh, from an ad that I saw in the Tribune that said that uh, if you're interested in gardening, apply to the Master Gardener program, and and I did so and really enjoyed it. It was a lot of work, but. Uh, Gave you a taste of a little bit of uh, how to grow just about everything. What kind of flowers do you have in your garden? I have absolutely everything you can think of. I have everything. Well, help me with this. I'm not uh, sure I can think of, of that many. Let of me them. see. What can I, I have various sedges because I have a pond. I have uh, various. You, you, what, what, do you have goldfish in the pond? I have goldfish, yes. I do not put koi in because they say the koi, uh, they tend to stir up the bottom. If you have uh, water lilies, they kind of tend to dig them up because they're always breeding. Uh, so I just have goldfish, and that way if the raccoons grab one, it's not that much of a catastrophe. I mean, imagine the herons would, would be attracted yes, to it. Yes, yes. Uh, some of our members do have big, mm -hmm. extensive pond gardens, and they did have visits from the herons where they virtually ate them out of several hundred dollars worth of fish. Yeah, yeah. How big is your, is your, is your uh, water it's, garden? It's relatively small. I have a long stream bed. It's about 20 feet long, but the uh, pond itself only holds about 800 gallons of water. Okay. So, uh, I, and I what, can, do you, what do you plant? Uh, Jason to, to the pond? Ooh, yes, I plant uh, like the water irises. I have some of the uh, bottled gentian, uh, various sedges. Um, what else? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, the uh, globe flowers. Um. You've got, you got some, some, some uh, plants in the water too. Oh yes, I have water lilies. Yes, the perennial water lilies where you just leave them in there all winter long. As a matter of fact, they leave the fish in all winter long too. Okay, all right. And they make it. But uh, then on the outer banks, I, I plant various types of flowers, a few annuals. I tuck them in here and there. Um, the stillbees do nice on the shady side. Um, just about everything. Okay. Well, and, the and, the and you'll be at the, at the uh, obviously yes, at, the, yes. at the bulb sale. Right? Yes, and we will be there to answer any questions. So if any of the visitors have questions about insects or or what, some sure. people bring in a leaf and say, can you identify this plant for me? Or something's eating this, can you tell what it is? We will have people to answer those questions for them. How long have you been involved with the club? Gee, I think I've been with the club now uh, 15 years. So it's been quite a long time. And if somebody wanted to join your, your organization, uh, who, who they, would they call either one of you? Or is it, is they okay. could do that. We're out on the website. We hold monthly meetings, the, first, the second Wednesday of each month at Spring Valley Nature Center at seven o'clock. We have 
a little social uh, obsession before refreshments are there. We hold our business meeting and then we have a speaker. 11 out of the 12 months we have a speaker and in December we hold our uh, holiday party, holiday awards party. But they can just just come in. They don't have to call ahead of time to make a reservation or anything. The dues are 20, they're, they're annual dues. It's $20 for single member and $30 for family. And family includes two people who reside in the same household. Okay. So I look, I, I'm gonna look forward to that event. I mean, I, I can use some additional flowers. I used to have a shade garden. You have a shade garden? <laughs> yes, lots okay. of trees in my backyard. <laughs> okay. Well, it's the north side of the house, so I, but, but my shade garden always morphed over the years. Now it's just a fern garden. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> And the ferns are doing very, very well, very, very well. Yes, particularly this year with all that rain, they, they're oh, very yes. lush. Oh, yes. So uh, you encourage people to join? You, you want more members, um, I suspect? Definitely. We're always looking for more members. And, you know, our, our meetings are very, lots of information. You know, you don't, member, people can come at least twice, but if they come the third time, then we do ask for their membership okay. dues. Now, how many events do you have throughout the entire year? And you've got, you've got the native plant sale, right? That's yours. Right. That's you, you the got, first one. That's okay. the first Sunday in May. Then we have our uh, bulb sale, which is the first Saturday in June. And then we have the holiday bazaar, which is the Saturday and Sunday after Thanksgiving. But in the summertime, in July, we have our members' garden walk. And that's a lot of fun because we get to see other members' gardens. Oh, yeah. You get oh, to sure. show off. <laughs> I can, I can imagine, I can imagine, you know, people who've got enough property available, they can, they can do right. some wonder, wondrous things. Yeah. Now you mentioned a shade garden, what kind of flowers do you have in your shade garden? Oh, I have lots of, I mean, I've purchased a lot of my plants come from the native plant sale, but I have, I like a stillbees, that's one of my favorites. Uh, I have some hostas, not a whole lot, but you can still do many things with other plants, you know, partial shade and shade. Sure. But, but a sun garden, you need six or more hours, and there's no place in my yard that has six or more hours of sun. Do you, any of you have hummingbird gardens at all? Or, or attract, do, you, do you plant specific flowers to attract different Hummingbirds kinds of and butterflies, yeah. yeah. Like the black-eyed Susans, the Leatris. Uh, uh, Menardas. Menardas, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the hummingbirds really love cup-shaped flowers. Sure. They also like the, like the trumpet vine. Uh, there's like uh, the foxgloves. They love that. Uh, Flowering tobacco? Yes, Nicotiana? yes. Nicotiana. Yeah. They yeah. do like that. As a matter of fact, petunias uh, for annuals. They, they like those. And they like the annual salvias, the ones that they call firecrackers. I okay. get a lot of hummingbirds coming around those plants. So again, one, one more time, you, you've got this, this native uh, Plant and bulbs, is it bulbs, bulb swamp, bulb sale? Bargain, the bargain bulb and plant sale. It's bargain uh, bulb and plant sale. Correct. Okay. It's the 21st annual bargain bulb and plant sale, June 4th, June 4th. from 10 till 2. 10 till 2. Yes. Okay, all right. Community Rec. Yes, the Community Rec is under 505 uh, North Spring and Scooth Road. Okay, Jan. Thank you, Mary Larson. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Al. Glad, glad you have me on board. <laughs> thank thank you. you so much. What do Father's Day and the Schaumburg Airport have in common? Find out next on Speaking of Schaumburg. June means it's time for the Experimental Aircraft Association's annual Father's Day breakfast. Here now to talk about this special event are the breakfast coordinator, Bob Myers, and the manager of Schaumburg Airport, Skip Archfield. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Hi, how are you doing today, Al? I'm doing fine. Tell us about, I understand you get an anniversary coming up Yes, here. sir. We just celebrated our 25th year of operation at the airport, and we're still going strong, and we're, we're very happy. Now, what, the Experimental Aircraft Association, just what organization is that, and what do they do? And uh, Well, it's an organization that's uh, primarily founded to help uh, home builders actually build or renovate older airplanes, but it has a much bigger purpose of not also just encouraging general aviation and getting young people into flying. Uh, but for me, the Experimental uh, Aircraft uh, Association helps quite a bit in uh, building my own airplane. And so they're a resource for me for building an airplane, making sure it's uh, constructed well. And so then we have a group of people who uh, uh, do a lot of the similar uh, things as that in building an airplane. How long did it take you to build an airplane? Uh, mine took uh, about four years and uh, about 2,000 hours, and that's a little bit more than some, a little bit less than others. Is that a kit? Yeah, mine was a kit, yes, and uh, uh, it, some kits are more complete. Mine's an all-metal kit, some are fiberglass, uh, all metal. I had to cut uh, a number of pieces myself. It's not just uh, 
uh, just assemble, uh, but a large sections of it were uh, pre-cut for me. What, what got you interested in, in, in aircraft? Oh, I've, I, I, you know, I grew up in this area, uh, right at the end of the runway over at O'Hare, and I think I was always fascinated with airplanes right from the start. So, uh, although my profession wasn't aircraft, I've always photographed airplanes, loved uh, uh, airplanes, and became a pilot, uh, just a private pilot, just because I love flying. Did you build uh, uh, kits when you were a kid? I built model airplanes. Model airplanes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of model airplanes. And uh, so I did a lot of that. Oh, with balsa wood? or is it Yeah, I built all kinds of plastic, the balsa wood kind, some gliders. Uh, my brother is actually very big in RC aircraft, which is the balsa wood kind of airplanes where, where you stand on the ground and fly the models. Ah. And so uh, he's done that uh, for years. Skip, how long have you ma managed the airport over there? Oh, good gosh. Um, probably uh, about eight years now eight nine years something like that we've been doing it and uh having a good time doing it and it's a lot of fun a lot of uh, trials and tribulations but i think we're 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 doing well over there what got you into, into aviation oh my dad is guilty of that um when i was four he started me flying and uh flying uh, at four yeah i was riding along with him and then sitting on his lap and then uh had my license now for just about 41 years and we do the charter flying out there now and uh teaching people how to fly uh, repair airplanes, fuel airplanes. So, so you're in a flight school there? Yes, we have a flight school there, and uh, uh, we're just uh, fl uh, starting it up again. We, we went in hiatus for a couple of years out there, but we're starting up, and it's it's going, growing well again. We're happy. Typically, who, who comes to you to learn how to fly? What? We have one or two type of people. We have the younger students that are wanting to make a career out of aviation, be airline pilots and that kind of thing. So typically, you know, high school juniors and seniors will come out with their parents and, and want to get involved in it so that they can progress and go to an aviation type college. Or we have the, the gentlemen, that have, or not gentlemen, I should say, the people who have been somewhat successful in their careers and now they, they can go back and, and, and much like uh, Bob here, uh, go and um, fulfill their dream of learning how to fly. Do you, do you find most uh, most of those pilots own their own aircraft, or, or, or they, they, they share the cost? They, what, how, how? Um, more and more, it's, it's uh, getting into partnerships in the aircraft, or flying clubs, that kind of thing, to, to kind of you know, uh, spread out the cost a little bit, because it is a, uh, an expense right now, especially with the price of fuel, like your car and everything sure. else, it's going up for airplanes the same way. You, you have uh, uh, clubs there that meet at, at the airport? Or? We have uh, not only, we have two of the uh, chapters of the Experimental Aircraft Association meet there, we have a, a uh, fly, uh, Schomburg Flyers that uh, is a, is a um, flying club that meets there. And we have the Schomburg Pilots Association. It's an association, all that, a lot of anyone really, that pilots and so forth they want to meet and they meet once a month out there also. Now I understand at the airport uh, uh, got some kind of award for a hundred dollar hamburger. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, as you know, we have a, a great restaurant out there. It's called Pilot Pete's. It's, it's kind of known all around the Midwest, and quite honestly, for I personally, having flown all over the United States, I think it's the best west restaurant on an airport uh, west of the or excuse me, east of the Mississippi. Um, but Pilot Pete's upstairs in, in, the, in the terminal building, uh, they they got an award from the state of Illinois uh, last year as having the best. Uh, uh, best food and as for an airport uh, air restaurant. They charge a hundred dollars for a hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> no, they figure in the cost of getting there. <laughs> oh, so they're flying in. Yeah, they're flying that's in. Right. That's and, it. And, and the cost of flying in. Yes, they figure in that. The hamburger is a little incidental. That's to exactly it, right. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> for us uh, private pilots, without a regular schedule, we need an excuse to go somewhere, and very often that hundred dollar hamburger is the we gotta, excuse. Yeah, check out the field. You Absolutely. Find out if, you know, just. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Uh, all right. I mean, they always are looking for pilots, always looking for uh, excuses, so to speak, to, to fly their airplanes. Now you, you've got a, a pancake breakfast coming up here. That's correct. On Father's Day, uh, every year on Father's Day, we hold a pancake breakfast at the airport. Uh, we use the hangar out there, is, uh, uh, set that up, and we uh, cook a breakfast. Okay. And we uh, uh, use that as it's our annual fundraiser for our uh, chapter. How many people come out for the, for the breakfast? Uh, it kind of varies, it, and it depends on the, the weather, uh, but we've had as many as 1,000. Uh, uh, we're looking to get uh, somewhere around 1,000 people. Mostly it's all local people, but we get people who fly in and fly their airplanes in as well. But it's not just breakfast. They, they can, people can, can book a flight too, right? Well, you can, what we can do is we, can, we will have people there with uh, fixed-wing aircraft who will, you'll be able to get in line and you'll be able to take a short flight. We do, we, um, we as, as I have for the last 25 years, we've all, we uh, donate our hangar facilities and, and so forth for the EAA to, to do their fundraiser. And as part of that, we, we offer uh, inexpensive airplane rides for people. 
uh, to give them the experience of going up in a small airplane and, and so forth. And uh, we um, we plan on doing it again this year. Uh, yeah, you have helicopters at the airport, too, don't you? Yes, we have a bunch of helicopters at the airport. We have uh, uh, all the major TV stations have their helicopters placed there, as well as two private uh, helicopter services that do uh, charter work and uh, they do flight instruction and helicopters out there. Uh, they have a uh, they do surveying for wildlife and, and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of so, so people, lot of activity going on out there. People can 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 learn how to fly a, a plane or learn how to fly a, a helicopter. helicopter. That's correct. How many? How, can you fly a helicopter? Yes, I do fly helicopters. Really? Yes, I fly. Somebody th- said it's not, it, up there you're moving these. It's like, it's like trying to. Try, try, try and figure balancing a marble on a basketball, and that's kind of a good analogy of it. Oh. And, <laughs> and you know, you're always going, everything's always moving, but it, it's a lot of fun. I really like it a lot. Okay. It's a challenge. Okay, all right. It's a challenge. Now, how many planes are, are, are based at the airport? Um, all the airplanes based there. We have right around 140 right now based there. Most of them are in hangars, but we do have some that's, that spend their time outside. But uh, we have a lot of hangars. All that we have no hangar, vacant hangar space. They're all taken and, and a waiting list to get people looking to get in, into the hangars. A waiting list. Huh? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many on a waiting list? Oh boy, last count. I think there's somewhere around 60 people on the waiting list okay. to get wow. hangars. Yes, well, that's quite a mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, clearly there's a, there's a demand. Now you you do charter flights, but you also fly uh, organs. Don't yeah, you? that's part of it. We we go out and we take either we go out and take uh, harvest teams to go out and uh, harvest organs, or we go out and uh, pick up organs and bring them back for Children's Hospital or, or some of the other hospitals downtown, uh, Rush and so forth, uh, Northwestern. Uh, so we do we do that also. Uh, how, how's your family feel about your... your, your... Uh, oh, well, my family thinks it's the most natural thing for me since I've uh, uh, taught my kids right from a very young age how to spot airplanes, exactly what, what they are, you know, if that's got two engines on the wing, uh, what kind of airplane could it be, you know, okay. and so they've been well drilled in airplanes. Oh, that's great. So they know all about it. They, uh, My wife is uh, had very little experience flying in small airplanes uh, before I started flying and she's warmed up to it she's actually she's, a pilot? Uh, she's not a pilot but she's a she's no longer a nervous passenger in the small planes <laughs> unlike me well, no, <laughs> well, nervous, pa- nervous passenger in a big plane yeah. <laughs> thanks for being here thanks nice for being talking here. to you thank you Al thank you thank you that'll do it for this edition of speaking of Schaumburg thanks for watching and join us again next month for another whole new episode until then I'll see you around town.